Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today, it's a very special 100th episode of Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. The big one, the bad one, Gary Grigsby. Um, 100 episodes, holy, wow, that's crazy. Um... Who would have ever guessed I'd last that long? Um, we started the channel with this game uh, because I couldn't find a good tutorial, or at least one that I thought would be good for other players to get into this game. I couldn't find that tutorial. Had some people ask me about the game and said, well, how can I learn how to play? I tried to explain it to them. I said, you know what? Let me make some videos. Uh, I'll just make you a video how to play the game. Uh, one thing led to another, and here we are at Strategy Gaming Dojo, uh, growing like a wild weed. Uh, it's fantastic, and this game started it all. It will always be my favorite game, I do believe. I don't know if one comes out that surpasses it. That's really going to be big news, because this has been my favorite game. Going back to the original War in the Pacific in 2004, uh, the Admiral's Edition, I believe, came along in about 2011. I think that's right. And here we are all these years later, 17 years from release and still as good as the day it came off the press. Uh, we are currently playing this Let's Play. We're in January 2nd, 1942. Now, I have to tell you, I started off making this anniversary episode and I got a little ways into it and I thought, you know what? Did I turn the volume down on my computer? Uh, because sometimes something will be running in the background or whatever, in it goes over the top of my sound. And I thought, you know, I just can't remember. So I stopped it. And sure enough, gosh darn it, one of my other videos, you can hear it in the background. And so it's just, you know, dueling voices. Like the old, uh, gosh, what was that on? Hee Haw. If you ever watch Hee Haw, uh, if you're not American, you have no idea what that is. Uh, but they had something called dueling banjos on that show. Uh, it was like a country music show. They had dueling banjos. Well, this was dueling voices, dueling dojos going back and forth. And I thought, oh my gosh. So I've already moved some things around in this turn that I planned on doing, you know, during the video. Uh, but it's already happened. So I've kind of moved everything for this turn. So we're going to resolve the turn, go look at the stats, get, you know, into January 3rd. But I did want to go around and show you um, what I had done, and there was kind of one big thing that stood out because it's come up in the comments, hey, you know, put what you can into Rabal. Now, I agree with that sentiment. If you're playing another human, I think that that's certainly something you should contemplate. Now, humans, many times, will be smart enough to think, hmm, they'll run recon over, they'll kind of get an idea of what you have in Rabal and go, whoop, straight around delay. Uh, down to Buna, potentially even getting crazy into Moresby, something like that. So, uh, but against the AI, the AI really wants to come take Rabal. We all know that, okay? If you played the game ever before, uh, the computer will really go all out to take Rabal. If you load this up with 500 combat value and it can't take Rabal, things get uh, screwy because uh, the, it essentially breaks the AI. And we had, you know, a guy named Andy Mack who uh, helped program this game. Uh, I think definitely for, well, I know for the Admiral's edition, but I think maybe even in the original game, he has stopped by the channel a few times and he's like, yeah, that actually Rangoon, Rabal, Palambang will kind of break the AI if they can't take them. They don't know, the AI doesn't know what to do next, okay? Now, I hate to play to the AI like that, but this, I mean, I give them a lot of latitude here. They have programmed an AI that's actually quite good for the most sophisticated, complicated game ever made. So I, I can't complain too much. So I am going to put some stuff up there, but I'm not going to overload it. And what am I talking about here? Well, if we go to cans, we have this motorized unit so it's a the first motor brigade armored unit is sitting up here okay it's got an assault strength of 92 i'm not going to put that up there uh if i was being devilish or if i was playing against you know 
Stanley and Sean or something, I would go up here and just put that motorized brigade in there and say, come and get me, let's go. Uh, but I don't want to go that far. So what have I decided to do? Uh, there's another down here at Townsville. There's a motorized that's 27 in assault strength. I said combat value before, you know, interchangeable with assault strength. Same idea. Um, this is a 27. I think this is a lot more fair. Uh, I just do. I, I think it's more fair to put something like this up there. I do want to reinforce it, but then we have the problem. Well, how the hell do we get it up there? Well, it's a great question. Uh, it's going to be the Hugh L. Scott. So the Hugh L. Scott's going to go up there along with the destroyer, the Whipple. We're going to take them up there. Um, and I had done some of this in the last episode, but I just kind of confirmed it. I messed around with some stuff. I was going to move this, that, here, there. Uh, eventually, all the kind of stuff that I'm glad I didn't record uh, because it's just me going back and forth in my own mind. And if you want to hear me talk to myself, well, that's your problem. But I, I'm not going to try to record that. <coughs> so anyway, we've got... Excuse me. Hold on one second. We've got the Hugh L. Scott coming up here with this uh, little brigade. So uh, anyway, I thought that that was fair. Again, you know, I'm going to play this game all out. But by the same token, it's no fun for anyone. If the if the AI just throws, you know, the kitchen sink at Rabal, can't take it, doesn't know where to go next. Uh, you know, it's realistic that the Japanese, any good Japanese human player would take Rabal. Uh, usually they probably would have be down here already. So, you know, let's, let's, you know, beef it up a little bit. We're, we're already sending some, um, f uh, supply up there. I think we've got supply. Yeah, we've got 8,700 in supply going up there. So we're, you know, we're bringing in supply. We're going to bring in this motorized brigade, uh, and let's just be halfway fair about it. Now we've got still got this sub up here floating around. I think that's more than fair. Uh, we'll try to knock some of his transports out. Um, we have this sub that's coming back down here. We talked about some of this stuff already in this turn. Uh, we can also go up here and look at his main task force. He seems to just be sallying around. I mean, oh, I don't know. This is like he's, he's throwing a parade through the Macassar Strait, he just did a walkabout, and then now he's just coming right up, straight back up here to the Palau Islands. Now, he may be needing some fuel. He's going to come into Babel Duab, get that, and then he's going to start coming down here to the Bismarck Archipelago, uh, looking at the Solomon Sea, maybe getting into Buna and Ley and Rabal. We shall see. It's interesting that he just went straight around here. He didn't really try to come into Surubaya at all. He didn't come over by Batavia or Palembang. He didn't even really, I mean, he didn't come in and take Ballypoppin. Now you can see here, the guns of Tarakan are about to speak because uh, he does have a task force with five ships in it. He's got a destroyer and uh, an armed uh, merchant carrier, or cruiser, I should say, uh, that we know about, and who knows what else he's got out here. He still hasn't taken Puerto Princesa. He's going to be merging in here to Clark Field, into Manila. Uh, God, I mean, I just want to give him Batangas so he doesn't keep attacking it, for goodness sakes. He's bombed that back into the prehistoric ages. He's got a you know, big unit here. Uh, at least 20,000 troops that we know about that's moving in on Batangas. So it's just a matter of time until the Philippines fall. We're trying to fall back as quickly as we can in Malaya. That's been a problem because he got he did get up and around us. And as you can see, he's actually taken Kuala Lampur. So he is through Kuala Lampur, Kuala Lampur, Kuala Lampur. Okay, and we're falling back. All of these troops are now falling back. They're retreating. Uh, they got their butts whipped uh, surprisingly easily, uh, and now they're headed back towards Singapore. Let's let's hope they get back to Singapore. We've got all kinds of combat strength here, assault assault strength, I should call it. Um, and we'll see. I mean, we'll see how long we can. I would love to hold on into February. Can we last that long? Probably not. I mean, he's going to come over here and uh, surround us. You know, he will cut off any supply. We've got a lot of units. Uh, what's our supply situation here now? 
I mean, we've got 35,000. We've got a lot of fuel, unfortunately. Hopefully, he bombs a lot of his own fuel. We'll see. Uh, and Rangoon, um, the Japanese, I'm just waiting for them to turn the corner here and head back up. I think ideally for them, they, they probably should have just come straight across. But they've decided to mop everything up down here, just so I guess so we couldn't land something behind them. Uh, just their completists, I guess. Uh, and now we're moving back north up towards Rangoon and Pagu. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, you see the Congo line out here. Uh, we've got things coming out of Calcutta. Uh, we'll come up here next time. Uh, we've got the red here because there's actually not enough supply here, I believe. We've got 208,000 tons of fuel here. And only 1915 in supply. Uh, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but yeah, you know, we just we got to get this fuel out of here as fast as we can. We've got most of these ships on CS, uh, but they just don't have even a basic level of supply up there. We'll have to think about sending something from Aiden over to that. You know, just one ship would do it. Um, okay, I, I think we're ready to turn the turn. I mean, the main thing I wanted to talk about was this situation down here at Rabal, why I'm doing something or not doing something. Again, the proper, you know, I say the proper, like it, there's a proper way to play. But probably the smart thing to do uh, if you're playing a very competitive game would be to move, you know, that, that really nice armored unit up here. Uh, I think it's in cons right now. Uh, move it up here, let that thing play around a bit. I'm just not going to go that overboard with it. I, I'm already kind of nervous sending the Hugh L. Scott up there. I think it's like a 20-point ship. Uh, you see all the units moving through Australia here. We've now gotten Darwin into a dark green situation when it comes to uh, the units that we actually have here. As a matter of fact, let's just make sure. Yeah, we got them at combat, defend, at target. We're now up to 161 on that garrison. If we look at Moresby, we're also, we've also gone dark green out here uh, with Australian troops. Uh, we do have these two, the A Koi, the B Koi. Uh, they're being flown over to Buna. Uh, they're not over there yet. But now we've got the garrison at Moresby at 195. Okay, we've got two very weak small units here. Well, we're just kind of talking and moving around. Uh, we talked about Nomaya. Let's look at Suva again very quickly. All right, well, we know we've got troops coming in here. Yeah, it's a 105. Okay, I just wanted to check that. We've got a lot of stuff coming in there. Uh, but let's turn the turn. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Um, and off we go. It will be January 3rd. How exciting as we motor away from New Year's Day 1942. All right, let's 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 just let it play out. I actually will be quite interested to see if we can get any of those troops in Malaya down to Singapore. Uh, he's bringing a really strong force down there, and they're coming down fast. We they got around us very quickly, much quickly than than I've seen happen the last ten times I've played this game. Uh, so I mean, being very aggressive in Malaya and moving very very quickly towards Singapore, which of course is very important for the Japanese to take. Uh, I, I think that goes without saying. I also think we may end up seeing a landing at Tarakan or an attempted landing at Tarakan. He's got all of those ships just off the shore. As I always joke around about uh, the guns of Tarakan, it's because uh, those coastal guns, for whatever reason, just absolutely rip the Japanese to shreds, it seems like, every game I play. Uh, hopefully it happens again. I mean, we could use that kind of help. Uh, we don't have a whole lot going on uh, in Borneo, that's for sure. In China, uh, I'll be curious to see what happens here. Now, we put a pretty good licking on him in Xinjiang. 
Uh, of course, the Japanese are much more powerful than us in China. Uh, we have a manpower advantage, but uh, the Japanese forces are so much better than ours that if he wants to strike back there, he can, as I'd be curious to see if, he, if they do. My goodness, seems like that, that took longer than usual. Okay, it's uh, nighttime, moonlight 100%. We're under a full moon. Gorgeous out over the Pacific, I'm sure. Well, I can tell you it is. I actually, I you know, I can see the Pacific from where I live. Uh, there was a full moon the other night that was, it looked... Looked like the size of the Earth out there. I mean, the moon was just massive. Uh, night surface combat near Tarakan. Wow. Okay. Well, I called that. Uh, not that I'm a fortune teller. It was pretty obvious when the when the red ships show up off Tarakan. Uh, Japanese ships. He's got some APs. Yep. He's landing. He's got AK along with carrying probably some equipment and also some supply. He's got that armed uh, merchant cruiser the kenru maru uh the hayadori is also coming in we only have pt boats there okay so we've got uh the dd kamikaze got an asw attack in on the sea lion uh we actually launched four torpedoes nothing happening there Okay, damn Mark 14s probably. The Sarjo is out here. Uh, the y Yazuki uh, found him. ASW, they found him, but you know we launched two torpedoes, but nothing happened there. Too bad. Well, it's an ASW operation, right? So they found us. We didn't find them. All right, he's coming in on Changsha now. Uh, with four Nels, we really don't have much. I mean, we don't fly these at night anyway. We've only got about five I-15s here. Uh, you know, the notoriously bad I-15. He did get in on the airbase. Okay. Now they're coming into Singapore. Uh, he brought ten Sallies in, in the light rain. Uh, we damaged nine of them. Uh, now, those could be operational losses. Uh, I mean, it would tell us if it was flak, so I guess, I guess that's what it is. Um, he's coming in on Singapore again. He had eight sallies, one damage, one destroyed by flak. There we go. Uh, runway hits one, so he got one point of damage there. We really got to hope that the runway holds up uh, long enough for us to stay up and protect our troops, you know, for the next week two weeks or so will they last that long or will the runway last that long um because if it doesn't you know they just bomb us with impunity so we we really got to hope that happens pre-invasion action off of turn oh turnate okay so this is where he's heading if you're not familiar with the map you know here's bally poppin here's celibus the island of celibus over here in the Malaccas, we have a uh, Ternate, which is our only real base of any substance over here. Uh, we've got like a patrol aircraft that flies off of here. Uh, I think we got a base force here. Well, he's in on it. Um, it's pre-invasion action. All right. Three coastal guns fired. Eh, nothing happened. You can see we do have a base force because they're firing on us. They're trying to bombard. Uh, we're firing back with, uh, and they unload at Ternate. Uh, amphibious assault at Ternate. Uh, Task Force 821 troops unloading over the beach at Ternate. Okay. Um, wow. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it's not where he picks to invade first often, I would say. Uh, Ternate is probably one of the places I would maybe rather they start with just because it doesn't have as much strategic importance as some other places. It's still, I mean, they're going to take all of those bases at some point if they start here at Ternate. Not the, not the worst idea in the world. Uh, defensive guns engage in approaching landing force. Okay. Uh, they're firing at us. We're firing at them. Uh, I'm not seeing any casualties, which is too bad. Now, Ternate's coastal guns 
just don't really pack the punch that like Tarkins do. It seems, I mean, at least they know. Well, speaking of Tarkin, here we go. Allied ships reported <coughs> approaching Japanese ships. Daytime surface combat. We only have the PTs there. Hayadori, this Kenra Maru, etc., etc. Uh, Allied ships reported to be a pro. Well, those should be Axis ships, I think. Uh, Allied ships are reporting that Axis ships are approaching. Um... Japanese task force suspends unloading operations and begins to get underway. Maximum vis visibility is partly cloudy conditions, 28,000 yards. Um, yeah, we spotted them at 22,000 yards. Both task, both task forces attempt to withdraw, which is interesting, right? He's worried because he's got these APs. We're worried because we're out there in freaking PT boats uh, and we both evaded combat. Huh. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, ASW attack near Tarapo. Yeah, oh, okay. So this is that Japanese sub out here. The Jupiter actually found it. Did we even? Nah, we didn't even get depth charges in the water. Uh, we know it's there. Hey, this is good. This is what I want to see. We found the one, or we found one of them that's kind of in between Sydney and Brisbane, very dangerous area for us. Uh, we found the I-5, uh, he dove deep, no depth charges in the water, unfortunately. All right, I, that was the night portion. We're during the day now, bad weather, we've got some bad weather canceling some patrols, okay. Uh, let's kind of fast forward through some of that. We're spotting a lot of stuff out here. All right, now we've got a morning air attack on Changsha. Zeros and Betty's in on that. Uh, we did get up six I-15s. This is what I was saying. We got, we got, I knew we had like five or six. Well, we got six in the air, uh, two Betty's damaged. We had an I-15 destroyed. He really started to chew on the runway, the air, air base there. So we had five airbase hits, uh, airbase supply hits three, runway hits 15. I always think of that as a percentage, like up to 100, if you're kind of wondering what the scale of that is. Now, that's not exact, but that's how I always kind of think about it. Now, interestingly, he's trying to bomb Pagu. Now, you may, uh, oh, was that uh, something I recorded Ah, I just can't remember. I moved a fly, the other flying tiger uh, wing that was up here. I think it was at pa, uh, Pashan. Um, I flew it down to Pagu. I tried to get it into Rangoon, but it was one heck short of being able to get to Rangoon. So I put it in Pagu. Well, we got it up in cap. Let's see what happened. We took no losses. We destroyed three Bettys and, we, and one other was destroyed by Flak. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, that's fantastic. All right. We're starting to sight quite a bit over Singapore, as you may expect. Uh, he's going to bomb Changsha. Okay. We got I-15s up again. We damaged four Bettys. He destroyed one I-15. That's not a bad trade for us. I mean, the I-15, uh, take what you can get. Just a massive number of sightings this time. He's got a lot of aircraft up in the air, and we're seeing them all. Uh, okay, so the the AM bombing phase has now drawn to a close, and we'll see what we get next. All right, these are all sightings. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, um. I just want to point this out down here. A Hudson 1 attacked a sub. Now, it, that happened very fast, but it was down by Townsville. Uh, Brisbane, Townsville. We'll have to go look. Hudson 1 attacked. SSI-171 is reported hit. Uh, awesome. That would be fantastic if we had a Hudson take out a Japanese sub. 
I mean, we won't really know, right? I mean, all we know is that the pilots came back and said, yeah, I mean, we hit the sub. Obviously, we hit the sub, you know, pin a middle on us. Um, we will not know just because of fog of war whether that sub actually goes down or not. Uh, we'll kind of know if it doesn't show up up and around. Maybe we just damaged it, right, and it goes back to Japan. That would be an okay result for us as well. Uh, afternoon air attack on Kansen. Uh, 12 zeros, three vowels. They did hit the runway for a point. Okay. Now they're coming in on the uh, Clark Field. It says afternoon air attack on Asiatic Fleet. Okay, at Clark, Clark Field. Oh, okay. Uh, that's our headquarters, but sure. Uh, 30 nates, nine lilies. One lily was damaged. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Uh, it was a ground attack, so he is trying to hit that headquarters unit. Interesting. Uh, 27 Sallies in on Clark Field. They're just wrecking that runway now. We've gotten all the planes out of there that we wanted to. The only planes left around here are at Batangis. And at Batangis, they bomb that into smithereens. I mean, we, there's no way we'll ever get those planes out. So anyway, at Clark Field, uh, Air Base hits 10, runway hits 22. Now they're hitting uh, this base force. It's an afternoon. It's a ground attack. Uh, 26 zeros, 20 lilies. They took no losses. We're not showing any damage. All right. He's coming straight across the Strait of Malacca into Medan. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's Lang Sa. Here's Medan. Uh, this is Lang Sa up here, 15 Ans, 21 Oscars. He hit the runway. Now we don't have any aircraft there and and don't plan to. So if he wants to chew up the runway, okay. Uh, 19 Sonyas on the 65th Chinese Corps. That's a ground attack, okay. Trying to soften us up a little bit. Um, we did get Cap up to defend Changsha. We had eight Tojos, 15 Lilies. No Japanese losses, no Allied losses, but again, he gets on that runway again and the airbase itself. So that's, you know, those I-15s, we may just keep trying to put them up in the air as long as we can. They're going to get destroyed one way or another here soon. 27 Sallies, 11 Nates in on Manila. Nine casualties reported. He also got into the airbase and on the runway. All right. All right, 15 Lilies uh, try to hit the Medan uh, Coastal Gun Battalion. Uh, we damaged two of them. Uh, we don't see any damage of our own. Kuching. I'd kind of forgotten about Northern Borneo. I thought he was going to land there very early on, but he just never has. Kind of surprising. That's, that's easy pickings for the Japanese, these Northern Borneo bases. All right, afternoon air attack on the 63rd Chinese Corps. Six Nates, six Sonyas. Uh, we don't see any damage. They hit the seventh war area, which they are they always like to do. All right, sighted, sighted. All right, aircraft are landing. Now we transport those B and A coys over, was that B and C coys over to Buna? You can see all the different stuff we're flying as that happens. His aircraft are now landing, uh, and some of our groups are combining. The AMC Bogar sunk. Now that was hit last time by his main task force. A uh, sub-attack near San Fernando, Allied ships. That's us, guys, the S-37. We did get in two torpedoes, or got two torpedoes off at the Yodogawa Maru. The Yodogawa Maru took a torpedo hit. He's got heavy fire, heavy damage. All right, excellent, excellent uh, to hit an AK of his. He was, he was probably bringing cargo over, supply over, uh, for his troops on the Philippines, but you know, knocking an AK that'll that'll certainly help. Um, invasion support action off Ternate. Defensive guns engage. Uh, three coastal guns fired. Uh, meanwhile, his AKs are here. 
it says they fired at enemy troops. I don't, you know, they're cargo ships, but okay. We're going to get any ground combat here? Um, should be interesting. All right, we got some marching going going on. These are our troops trying to get back across the river here. We're despe desperately trying these units to get them back across the river here to help defend Changsha. All right, this is a bunch of the marching. We can kind of see where it's taking place. It all happens very fast, obviously. Uh, battle at Xinyang. Uh, oh, 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 we lost that battle. You see the Chinese corps retreating. That's us. Uh, he knocked us back out of uh, Xinyang. That's very surprising to me. I don't know what he had in there, uh, but we won that first battle fairly easily. Uh, Japanese shock attack. He had 43,000 troops. We had almost 41,000. He had a lot more guns and vehicles. His assault value, 1383 to 1215. When you adjust everything, though, better leaders, etc. 2730 to 885. Uh, yeah, he reduced our fort. Well, we didn't have a fort level. His assault odds were 3 to 1. They've recaptured Xinyang. He took 2,800 casualties. We took 18,000. It's not a misprint. Uh, the Chinese just lost 18,000 men. Wow. That's a huge battle. Uh, Japanese bombardment attack near Kwasai, uh, 1422. Okay, nobody got hurt here, it seems. They just bombarded to try to wear us down uh, to you know reduce fort levels, uh, disrupt us. Ground combat at Clark Field. Ooh, this is a big one. All right, so he's making his push. Uh, it's just a bombardment this time. He's got 7,500. We had almost 18,000. Uh, five casualties reported. That's it. Okay, they've now ta captured Temela. Uh, we're trying to, yeah, we're trying to retreat out of here. Uh, but he's now up and around us. He has 7,000 troops. We had 3,100 at Temela. Uh, okay, yep, he captured that fairly easily. He lost 950 men. We lost 727. Okay. Oh, here he goes. Now he's starting to move up the edge of the peninsula there, up the edge of Burma. All right, now we're on to the fortifications. Wow. So we had a battle where we lost 18,000 men. I mean, that's just massive losses. That's why I hate to attack with the Chinese. I got a little out over my skis trying to take Xinyang there. It looked so inviting. Uh, so we took it. We put a little hurting on him last time. He regrouped and absolutely just ground at us there. Uh, now, we, he did lose 4,000 men too, which is a lot for the Japanese in any one individual battle. But overall, he got the best of us there. All right, we've centered over Pearl Harbor. <clears throat> it is now January 3rd. Can you believe it? Let's go to the info screen. Uh, sorties today we ran 3150, he ran 2426. He's running more and more, he's kind of closing this gap here. As you can see, for the campaign, we've ran a lot more. Um, air to air losses we lost four, he lost five. Okay, nothing destroyed on the field, destroyed by Flack. We destroyed two of his, he destroyed none of ours. Operational three for him, two for us. So we got the better of the air, <clears throat> you know. Uh, the better of it. I, it was now knockout blow or something, but you know, we did a little better in the air than he did this time. As you can see, our score stayed above 11,400. That's excellent. The longer you can keep this above 10,000, uh, the more likely it is you're going to win. You may find that shocking, but 10,000, once I dip below that, you know, then you start to, I don't know if worry is the right word, but you know, you're getting some pressure. Uh, but at 11-4, we're, we're fine there. Um, now, let's go down this. We still control 556 bases. My kind of magic line there is at about 500. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it's getting a little tighter. And it will get down there, right? He's got a lot more bases to take, uh, but we're nowhere close to that yet. 
Um, Allied Aircraft points lost 243. He's lost 384. Uh, the ground unit losses, we've now lost 1,300 points on the ground. He's lost 285. Uh, that's pretty normal. I mean, ultimately, we're going to lose a lot of troops in China. It's all about just hanging on there. Uh, and China has almost unlimited manpower uh, to some extent. Uh, Allies ship sunk, 80. Japanese ship sunk, 22. Let's go see in what, what sunk this turn or this last turn. Uh, the Bogar, that was our ship. A Dutch ship uh, was a mine sweeper, local mine sweeper. One point, that's it. Okay, we'll take that. I think we we hit his sub, or at least we were told that by the uh, the pilot crew. Uh, so I think maybe we got a sub, and we also got the torpedo into that AK uh, off the Philippines. I'm very curious to see whether that sinks or not. Um, okay, what else to look at? Well, we've got new things that will be coming on the map. Uh, we'll have to go look at our ship availability. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yep, that's the right way to sort it. Uh, we've got some new AKs coming on. We've got an AP, uh, HTML. The city of Canterbury uh, showing up at Cape Town. Quite a few things uh, showing up at Cape Town. AKs. Uh, mainly here, it looks like. Where's the next kind of capital or decent ship we get? The Emerald comes in at Mombasa, a light cruiser. Okay. Uh, the Royal Sovereign, the battleship. Oh, wow. Okay. The Brits start sending a lot of stuff. Royal uh, Sovereign, the Dorsetshire, uh, the Clark, the, what is this, Jerkhedes? Uh, at Mombasa, Cape Town, etc., we get a sub uh, tender, the Sperry at Cristobal. We also get a lot of subs down here. Uh, these are Dutch subs, which are excellent this early in the war. At Surubaya, we also get some American subs that show up at Panama Canal, also at Mara Island. Um, when's the next time we get a carrier? Uh, the British... Uh, send us one actually in 14 days we get the indomitable well that's fun okay that'll show up at aiden we also get a british sub we haven't seen that yet in this game americans start cranking battleships in about three weeks um also more destroyers more submarines i mean it never is right but the indomitable that's kind of the big thing in about two weeks excellent all right, I think I'm going to call this an episode. When we come back next time, we'll go over what we're going to do on January 3rd, and I'll probably try to turn the turn. Uh, that one will be a little longer. I'm actually going on a few days vacation, but I wanted to make sure I got special episode number 100 up. Um, very exciting. Thank you so much for the support. I'm glad you like these. Uh, you know, they, they remain popular on the channel. Uh, I'll always be making these, and I'm glad you like them. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, continuing to support the channel, supporting this game. If you like this content, just hit the like button. That's all I ask, just so I know, you know, that you like these videos. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.